Um, going to Oklahoma City, a lot of conversations with our uh, with that coach there, and th that's some some uh, area I can really help with, where uh, you may end up talking to college coaches, and maybe they give you some um, topic or some tips or topics, things to avoid, things to talk about. But, um, the process and, and making sure you don't kind of step in it and, and make some bad decisions, that's what I'm here for. Uh, this is a checklist, and you'll find this on the team app, and we'll show you where to find that later. But for each uh, for each of the classes, we've got these, I've got this checklist of things you should be doing by class. So uh, this is a, a really good thing to print out, um, and also, so you keep track of it to, um, on a hard copy, but being able to click on these live links and go through makes it a whole lot easier than having to go through and type those in. So it has a lot of value in going through those, uh, those, those live links on here. And it can really step-by-step step walk you through the process where uh, you don't want to get behind on, on some deadlines and get some things done. Uh, the FAFSA, for example, is something you would, you would do just your senior year, but doing that as early as you can your senior year really help your chances of scholarship. We want to make it really easy for coaches um, in the process. So we need to talk about this more later. But there are athletic scholarships. Athletic scholarships um, sometimes are spread out in a lot of different ways. So one is they can give an athletic scholarship, but they want, to, they want their money to be stretched, right? Their budgets are, are somewhat limited sometimes, even in the best cases. So in, in order to stretch that, if they can give some athletic scholarship money, some need base, which is what this FAFSA is all about, and then uh, you, you, you rock in the classroom, so, so now you can get some academic money, then you get a full ride, right? So, but it's, it's not all athletic scholarship. So as coaches are trying to, to stretch their money and then put, put the best product, the best players, the best team on the floor or, or pool or whatever it is, um, if you can make it really easy by getting a lot of this stuff done and then also do, do it well in the classroom, and you've marketed yourself pretty well. Because the choice between someone that they can only give a half scholarship to, which that, that athlete may decline that, but you'd be real willing to accept half because you're going to get full with the other, right? So um, kind of knowing the process, only have to do those, those live links will help you a lot to get through that process. So there's one for each class. Uh, which you can find on the HHS Athlete Team portal. If you have your phone, go and pull it out. If you don't have, uh, if you're not on here already, you're probably on some team app for your, uh, uh, for your, your sport, right? So add this one. So if you'll search for HHS Athlete Portal, you should get automatic acceptance on there. Um, anybody having trouble finding that? Sign up, so the, the, the way I use this is I push out some content occasionally. It's also some place where you can go uh, look for some things, some categories. For example, this is some of the stuff that uh, is a little bit more recent. Um, big topic, this transfer portal. How many of you know about the transfer, transfer portal? So in, in any given year, the last couple of years, uh, I'm not sure what happened to my power here. Um, there are about a thousand, a thousand Division One athletes who are in this transfer form. So you know, what does that mean for high school athletes? It means it got a lot tougher. Because now we have college coaches who have a choice between going to portal and find a player or going to high school and find a player. So then, you know, why, why you? If you're super, if you're one of those five-star athletes, then it's pretty easy. But if, if they're not sure, you may be a three-star type athlete, a lot of times they're, they're gonna go to that portal because they want success now. Uh, they're dependent upon winning, uh, winning. They don't win, they lose their job. So they've gotta have this kind of win, win now type of thing. So that's part, again, part of why I'm here is to help you with that process because it, it is harder. Um, you're up against now not just your, your own classmates, your own uh, people in your league uh, around the state or around the country, but now you're competing against 
high school, or excuse me, college players who maybe even are proven. So we've got to get your stuff out there got to, and really make you marketable, make it real easy for coaches not only to find you, but to, to go through all those steps. Uh, how it work? Anybody have any ideas? some of you about this, about these things, but uh, a, lot, a lot of resources uh, were you exposed. Okay, anybody have trouble finding the, the portal? Okay, a lot of, like I said, lots of content on there. Um, some of it just gets, gets pushed out through um, this news feed. Um, wanted to keep up on, so depending on how she was doing, had great success early. Uh, trying to keep track not only of athletes, but uh, also current trends, so there's news articles that get posted, things like that all the time. So that gets pushed out. So. Good resource for you. Share that with your parents also. Um, they're, they're really in the dark about some of that process, so definitely make sure um, that you're letting them know about that also. Uh, for the sports listed there, soccer, volleyball, basketball, lacrosse, tennis, golf, football, uh, baseball, softball, field level is, is kind of like Facebook for college coaches. Um, it's free and uh, a, a good way to post a profile, post video, things like that. Um, there, there are other formats, uh, like Matt Moss probably is, is the best source for, uh, for wrestling, and dance is, is its own thing in terms of just gonna send an audition video. But uh, for those sports, if you're one of those sports, get a free uh, field level account. There's no, re there's no reason to pay for anything that's, that's kind of what I do, is the, the, the fee thing that you would normally pay them for, uh, the district has hired me to do that part. So um, if they ask you to, to you know, sign up for a, a, a premium profile where you're paying for it, yeah, wouldn't really do that. Um, if you want to do that, we can talk about it, I can give you some, some advice on it, but not a lot of reason to, to have that expense. But uh, some of the, some of the things with field level, I chose that one primarily because I can help on my end a lot. So I can get out a lot of information. So this happens, we don't, didn't want to embarrass anybody here. So this is a, a player I know in the, in the Portland area, Gladstone, and when I look at some of her profile type activity is uh, she's got a lot of hits on some things. So as you look across there, you see uh, 34, college coaches or 34 programs are following her. Uh, 217 have watched her highlight video. Um, and those things can be tracked by division. So she's probably going to be a division two NAI type player. And you kind of see where the, the, 
the trends are in terms of who's looking at your profile. That's stuff I can see on my end, but I'll, I'll share with you uh, rather than paying for, for all that content. But um, the promotions. So this is a this is a, a easy way. Her her dad is actually doing this too, and, and I'm helping her with it. But we can promote to 113 colleges pretty quickly. If I had to email or you had to email to 113 different colleges, that would take weeks of time because you want to personalize it, get it out, find their emails, make sure you're getting the right people, uh, and so on. Um, but now we can push out a profile with content and get out a whole bunch of stuff real fast. So um, that's another another really good reason to do it is we can reach a lot of people. Uh, um, and probably for soccer, um, there was a volleyball case last year, uh, a couple other sports where this, this was a, a real difference maker in terms of getting information out there. Um, so um, really, really encourage you to do that. Um, and then uh, we can make sure you fill out as best as you can on the content, GPA type things. Um, uh, if you know your, your 40 times, there's three cone drill and some other things on there. But hopefully we can start filling in as a, as a program. Uh, talk to Stroke a little bit about having like a combine day or something in the spring or summer where we're collecting all of that, that information that you have. Some of it you have already, but some of it uh, you don't necessarily have that right now. So uh, anyway, fill out, fill out that as much as you possibly can and uh, uh, get some video up there as quickly as you can too. Talk about that here in a minute. Um, the NCAA Eligibility Center. Uh, that's something that if you end up playing uh, Division One, uh, NCAA Division One, two or three, you will need to have fill out a profile. Uh, if you are uh, a sophomore, junior, uh, not super important to get it up there, but you can. Uh, and but. There are two different profiles on that. One is uh, about $100. And if you play, I believe, Division II or Division I, uh, you'll eventually have to pony up $100 bucks for that. Uh, there's some financial assistance for that um, through, through the district. And if anybody has any concerns about that, it can help you with it. But um, uh, if it's Division III, that's, that's free. And that's a good place to start, since you may not know what level you're going to play at. Um, that uh, just getting that piece done, and then you can fill in the rest of the information when maybe you start talking with some of those Division uh, two or four Division one type coaches. So uh, the, the NCAA Eligibility Center will play a part at some point if you play at the NCAA level. So the other one is NAI level. So same thing, same idea. Uh, there's pretty much for most sports now, they've narrowed it down to a one. NAI, NAI level, it's also about $90 to sign up for that one. Um, I think that one I would wait on a little bit longer. Um, in, in order to play at an NAI school, you'll eventually need to do that. But that can be done more towards your senior year, probably. Uh, but some things that get uh, added on there are like your transcripts get uploaded to both um, and some other contact type information. And a, another good way to be, to be marketed, though. But we'd probably wait on that one a little bit more towards your senior year. Any questions so far? Okay. So just as you as you look at, you know, what are you up against? Um, and, and what does it look like across the country? There are uh, 351 NCAA Division I uh, universities, not, and not all of them will offer all of those uh, sports. 308 Division II, 443 Division III, uh, NAI 250, and community college about 500. And then the, the students that, uh, student athletes that represent each of those is on there also. So some, some things you'll, you'll definitely want to know are uh, the different levels of what that means. Division I will by far have the most money to give. Uh, Oftentimes, like in basketball, they'll have a roster of 15 or 15 people are receiving scholarships. There's a, there's a minimum probably of 12, I want to say, for 
uh, Division One. So it, they've got money to give, uh, and they have to they have to meet those thresholds. Each time you go down a level, and that's we're talking about purely athletic scholarships. Uh, go down a level that, that the uh, requirement for schools to offer a minimum is a little bit lower. So they have a little bit uh, a little bit less money, um, and the each time you go down a step two, the, the talent level drops just, just a little bit, although um, sometimes you've got Division two schools that are, are beating Division one. So uh, in any case, either of those is a super high level. Now you get to Division three. Uh, I'll have a side note of Division two. Anybody know how many Division two schools are in Oregon? Some trivia. Anyone? There used to be two. There's one. Uh, Concordia closed about three years ago um, in Portland. They were the uh, one of two. Now the only other one is Western Oregon University. So, uh, but there are a lot of them as you can see across the country. Um, so Division Three. Division Three can offer no uh, athletic scholarship. Zero. So we're talking in places like George Fox. Uh, 50 grand Eastern Oregon, probably a lot less, because that's a, a, a private school, George Fox. Um, Eastern Oregon, NAI school, uh, uh, a lot less, uh, Divi sorry, Division Three. George Fox is Division Three. So you're paying a lot of money for a private school, but playing a lot of money to play a sport. So it doesn't mean you can't get any money, it just means you can't get any athletic scholarship money. So uh, things like academics uh, and, and need base is where you're probably gonna get some, some help with that. Um, that's Division Three, so kind of kind of knowing what your where your targets are uh, is super important. Uh, NAIA, uh, they can give money, they can give academic money, they can give sports scholarship money. And Eastern Oregon would be University would be an example of, of a local NAIA school. Um, community colleges also can give money; they just can't give a lot. Uh, for example, if you're going to go over to Blue Mountain. Um, they're going to probably spread out their scholarship money uh, where you're getting maybe half of all the tuition uh, for the year. And they're going to spread that out with, with uh, 10 or 12 players or something like that. So uh, it still helps. Um, and it's a lot cheaper way to go to college in general. Um, and, and my job in, in the process as far as when you're trying to determine you know, what, what you need to do to get to the level you want to play at or trying to determine what level that is, I'm going to be really honest with you, um, and sometimes that, that's hard information to hear. I told someone last year I um, wanted to, to be a golf person, so I got no chance. I got no chance to be a Division One golfer, uh, and uh, that, that's just the reality of, of where that was. I don't want to have you, you know, be told one thing and just not be honest. So uh, try to be real honest with you about where it is and then things that you really need to do. So. Whether that's in the classroom or the weight room or skills, things like that, uh, I'll be real honest with you. So, uh, if you have questions about that individually, I can help with that uh, process. You know, lots of different college uh, athletics. You know, what, what are the odds? Well, first of all, you have to have the talent, you have to be good enough. Um, there are a lot of standards out there, and that's what this is. Um, I think this is track specifically for Division I. Um, this is not the, the end all, and it's not 100% accurate, but it kind of gives a good sense of what things look like. So, you know, if you're a Tier 1 recruit or a Tier 2 recruit, uh, you know, where, where do your ties lie? Um, if you, you know, if you want to be a, a Division One football quarterback, um, there are certain metrics those, those coaches are looking for that are generally like combine type things. So uh, they're looking for your, your 40 times, they're looking for your bench press, looking for a deadlift squat, your three cone, your 20 yard cone, I think it's called. A um, few things that, if you can add metrics to show that you're athletic enough, um, I think that's really important. One thing we, Stroke and I talked about was, if, if you know these things, those are goals that you can reach for. So that's one reason why we're trying to do this combine type work, where, you know, find out where you are, and if, Talent level isn't right there. You know, can I get there? Is that realistic? Am I only a few seconds off, a few tenths off, or whatever it is? So there's something tangible for you to try to get there. Skill level will be something different, but um, 
if you could cross out an athletic piece off, that's, uh, that would really help. And uh, I know she does a great job, as does Fatete with the uh, weight room type stuff. Uh, Division one football, um, kind of by, by, oops. Kind of by what, what trends are looking for in each of the positions. And uh, that's for Division one. There's, there's different metrics then for Division two, Division three, and so on. Doesn't mean that no one can ever be a, a top tier quarterback if they're not 6'3". It just means that it might be a little bit harder. You'll have to do things a little, little bit better. You can imagine at the quarterback position, if you're 5'10", and you're, you're live under 6'3", or 6'5", you won't see over. So uh, that, that's some of the reality in, in why you can look for some of those metrics. Just a little bit more information there about uh, the different divisions, um, how many how many players are going to end up uh, playing at each level um, in a uh, sport like basketball. Uh, so when you get to col college athletics, it, it really becomes a job. The higher the level, the, the, the more of a job that it becomes. Um, the coaches here, of course, you want your team to win. The, Coach want your team to win, the community wants your team to win, your parents want your team to win, but in college, if teams don't win, college coaches lose their six-figure job, and now they they have no income. So it really ramps up um, as far as what they expect out of you, and, and you kind of become an employee of sorts, especially if you're on an athletic scholarship. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, if you only kind of like the sport, I would really discourage you from playing college athletics. If you love the sport, you've got a good chance of being successful and, and accepting the demands of what that looks like in order to be uh, a good two at a two-year college or, or four or a four-year at a four-year college to, to have success. Right? Um, there, are, there are a lot of demands. Um, the academic demands are high, but the athletic demands are super high. And, and what college coaches expect of you, um, kind of crazy sometimes. So if you don't really love it, probably want to consider not, not doing a sport in college. Uh, some, some things to, to, to work on to get there. Uh, make sure you get stuff done in the weight room. Uh, we have some of the best resources as far as weight room. Uh, in not only in this uh, state of Oregon, state of Washington, but across the country. Um, we really have a, a ton of support for that. Um, that will that will allow you to be strong enough, uh, put enough muscle, um, and just imagine that if all things are equal with you and another another athlete, another player, but they're stronger, they're kind of probably going to be better, right? If all other, all, all other things are equal, so do the things you can uh, and have control over to put yourself in the best possible position. The weight room is huge. Uh, weight room is also a, a great way to uh, to work on injury prevention, nutrition. Super, super um, important too because if you do the weight room and not the uh, not the nutrition part, then you're going to have a hard time making the gains you need to gain. Um, Got to be super tough. Ask a college coach this last fall what what are college athletes when you see them as freshmen. This was a Boise State coach. What are they? What are they least ready for? And the answer was, they're they're not ready for the grind. They're not ready for how hard this is. Uh, they're not ready for uh, how much competition it is when they're playing an, another opponent. But they're also not ready for the grind of competition in practice every day. Uh, is had this conversation with the player that uh, ended up going to the University of Washington. Really wasn't working very hard. He uh, was doing the club circuit, uh, having success, but in, in good enough success, he was uh, recruited to get a full ride at the University of Washington. But the conversation kind of looked like this, is uh, if I were to go in that, that first practice and say, how many of you were the best player in your team? All 12 hands would go up, right? And then the next question is, how many of you were first team all league? Hands go up. All of them, okay? 
How many of you were first team player of the year in your conference? All the hands go up. How many of you were first team all state? All the hands go up. How many of you were the player of the year in your state? All the hands go up, right? So we're talking about a lot of talent, and at some level, that's the way it is for, for all uh, levels of play. Um, maybe to a little bit lesser degree, you took University of Washington for football or, or basketball, but that's what it looks like. Um, some of the other sports, to a lesser degree, but it's still the grind, right? So now, are you willing to accept that challenge every day and, and be really good and compete for a spot? Um, because then it becomes as much of a mental thing as it is physical. Because they're already there because there's a skill. They're already there because they're uh, physically talented enough. But now are you mentally tough enough to, to deal with that grind? Um, and that was a comment this uh, Boise State coach made was, they're not ready for that. So do all the things that you can to make yourself better. Uh, and even if you're the best player in your team or the best player in your area, there's always somebody out there that's better. So are you going to measure yourself against the ones locally? Or are you going to measure the ones against the ones globally? Because that's your market, right? That's the market of competition. Whether it's the team you're playing or the team you're playing on, that you're going to deal with. So uh, you always push yourself a little bit farther. Don't don't be a big fish in a small pond. Uh, so do all things you can to get better. Uh, if you uh, are at one level, you're maybe the best in, in your area doing one thing, then what's, what's the next thing I can do to get better? So don't don't be complacent and don't be content. Um, I had this conversation recently with a college coach. Ask him so if if you're recruiting for football, how likely are you to go to a high school basketball game to watch that recruit? And the coach said, highly likely. So just know that you're always being watched. In that case, um, you know, you've got, you got a helmet on, playing football, some things you can't really see um, unless you're really up close in the huddle or in the sideline, but because you can hide a lot with the, like the uh, helmet on, right? But if, if that same athlete is playing another sport like basketball where they can see you, a lot of your body language a lot more um, and see what you look like on the bench and so on, that, that matters because they, they want to spend four years with you to offer you a scholarship. So, why you? And if, if you have a, a attitude problems or body language problems or and sometimes maybe body language that you're not even aware of. Like, I didn't know that it looked like that. Um, but coaches will literally, they'll, they'll cross you off their list. If they think you're a great talent, but your body language uh, is not good, even in a different sport, um, they still want to deal with that. They just don't want a lot of trauma because uh, that drama can be contagious. It's not to say that they never they never take chances on uh, players that have some drama, but they want to avoid that as much as they can. So just know that you're always being watched. Uh, take take a lot of care in uh, doing things the right way, uh, being encouraging to your teammates, uh, playing hard all the time. Uh, you take plays off, you know, no matter what the sport. Um, if you have a, if there's a bad call, it doesn't go in your in your favor uh, in any sport. Uh, how are you responding to that? Um, are you only good against bad teams, or are you good against the best competition to your rise in each division? Uh, just know that you're, you're always being watched. So always put your best foot forward. Uh, I think this is, this is part of that. It's not real loud. Recruiting enthusiastic kids is harder than it's ever been. Because every kid watches TV watch the NBA or they watch Major League Baseball or they watch the NFL, whatever sport they watch, WNBA, it doesn't matter. And what they see is people just being really cool. So they think that's how they're going to act. And they haven't, they haven't even figured out which foot they use as a good foot and they're going to act like they're really good players. You see it all the time. You see it every year. You tournament, you see it every high school. So recruiting kids that are like really upbeat, love the life, love the game, have this tremendous appreciation for when their teammates do something well, that's hard, that's hard, it's really hard. So on our team, we, me, my coaching staff, we put a huge premium on body language. And if your body language is bad, you will never get it. Somebody says, well, you know, you just 
Okay, uh, <clears throat> highlight video. Uh, highlight video is one of the best ways you can market uh, market yourselves. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, uh, no matter what grade level, then do it because if you're if you're a freshman, it's good practice for one thing. Uh, and then uh, the, the deal is is if if you don't have video, you're putting yourself in a, a really difficult spot to get recruited. Uh, College coaches are going to have a hard time getting to every gym uh, or every pool or every, every track in the country to find people. So they rely on video a lot. Uh, video, video, game video, highlight video, it won't get you recruited, but it, it will get you noticed. So you know, when, these, when they send out these profile things with this video, if I don't send a video, then you're one of about 5,000 athletes that are probably going to uh, talk to you at the, at the highest level. Like they're going to get a lot of emails. So if there's no if there's no video, it's like, well, you didn't really make it easy for me to know enough about you. Because I can see your stats, but why are your stats the way they are? You know, are, are your stats you scored 40 points a game, but you took 60 shots? Well, that's not very efficient, right? So they're a little less interested in some of those stats than they are actually putting some eyes on what you do and what you do well. So what, what the video will do is, oh, okay, this guy's got some game. I want to know a little bit more about him. I want to know a little bit more about him. Uh, it, uh, super important that you have something out there. Um, should be, in general, about three minutes long. Could be a little bit shorter. Could be a little bit longer. But um, having some content out there of some of your best stuff. So um, if, if you need help with a video, I'm more than happy to do that. Planning on doing some INE specifically on. Uh, going through Huddle for those people that uh, are using Huddle and help you with creating that, those, those uh, highlight reels. Uh, have done some for a few athletes too, but uh, probably won't have a lot of time to do, to do everyone's. But going through and understanding the steps. How many of you are really comfortable on Huddle and know how to do your own highlight reels? Okay, so a little bit mixed. Uh, you can definitely help with that. Do that if you know how to do it. Uh, it get that content up there at ASAP, then, then update it. Um, for those of you on Huddle, uh, also there's a, a new toggle on there uh, where you can hit that toggle and show recruitable. Um, that's another good way for college coaches to find you, uh, right? Because in, in this case, if you mark it as recruitable, then it have college coaches have access to it their credentials are able to, to look at your profile and, uh, and see some of that, that highlight video that's being created without you sending it out. So there, every every year when we looked at that list of about 32 athletes, um, pretty sure that about 28 of that, those athletes didn't end up where they thought they were going to end up. So uh, there, there may be some places where you send out information to coaches, I send information out to coaches, but somebody that, that uh, that didn't happen to, they, they found you another way. 
So hitting that target uh, will make it much closer for college coaches to find you. Uh, this is our, our girls basketball. It's this check mark down here uh, up at the top there to say recruiting. Uh, and you know, no matter what sport it is, you want to flip that toggle, and I can't do it for you. That's something you have to do on your own, just the way they built the system. But this will confirm uh, if, if you um, have, have switched that over. So if you want to play in college, you're, you're on huddle, definitely get that up there. Make sure your profile is updated, and then the highlight video uh, is updated as well. Uh, okay, another, another really good source. You can find this on your the, the team app, the HHS portal. A ton of information on here, and it's a ton of information uh, by by division. So if there's target, you're targeting division one or two, NAI, community college, it doesn't matter. You can click on there's there's content on here uh, to to help you find like. What are all the NAI schools in the state uh, or in the country? Um, and it has a full list there. I uh, have one of these for each, each level of play. Uh, and always building more content on there uh, all the time. Um, this, there's, there's so many nuances to So many nuances to uh, sports. So this is an example of some, some uh, recruiting calendars you can find on there. Um, and this will help decode some of the things that are occurring. So for example, I sent stuff out to a college coach and I didn't, I didn't hear back. I, I guess they must have no interest in me. That depends on a lot of different things. If you are a sophomore uh, and you've sent stuff out to a college coach to a division one or division two, they can't they can't initiate and they can't respond to anything you send them. It still has value to send stuff out because you maybe put yourself on their radar, but if, if you don't, uh, but they can't respond to you. Okay? Uh, maybe somebody has been recruiting you really really actively, and uh, you reach out to them, uh, kind of just connect again, and they made no contact with you. They didn't reply. Well, again. Could be because of, of that, that deadline. So I know we just went through this, uh, looking at some dates for volleyball, and uh, a college coach, can't, Division One or Two, can't uh, contact an athlete or reply to an athlete until June fifteenth of their sophomore year. So uh, uh, there are dead periods also. So you just go into a tournament, man, I really rocked it. Uh, reached out to the coach, he got crickets. He didn't reply. Or she didn't reply. Well, that's because there could be a dead period and they can't. So uh, there, there are a lot of rules surrounding those things and knowing those dates so you don't get discouraged. Like, well, I'm going to try that again. Well, if you have those dates, you're kind of armored, armed with information so you know, uh, you know why they're not replying. There might be a pretty good reason it could be like a dead period. So uh, there's one of those um, going back one step. This, this portal. Go to calendars for important dates. And there's one of these for every sport. So a baseball recruiting calendar. Uh, there you have. Uh, so that kind of decodes some of the things that are, that are occurring. Um, the, the the viewing dates. That's another. Baseball is a little bit different. There's an evaluation period. Uh, I don't think that's as defined for baseball as some others. Uh, there's an evaluation period, just having gone looked at the volleyball stuff recently. So if, if you've been on the tournaments uh, in volleyball between December 1st and February 15th, I want to say, is Division One and Division Two coaches can't come watch you. Okay? And every sport has that nuance. So you kind of want to know what kind of a tournament you're going to also. Uh, and and that will, that's some information you'll find on those calendars. Um, after February 
16th for volleyball or, or 17th, somewhere around there. Then college coaches can, can go watch you live and in person. Um, if, you're, if you're too young, they can still watch you. They can't, can't contact you. But at least you know what level of coaches are at those events um, if you happen to be doing some, some club type stuff. Social media, just just be real careful with social media. Um, you know, kind of, I read something today on there too, and uh, the, the whole deal, if you have your social media private, maybe your parents are requiring that, or maybe not, but if you put private on there, um, some, some college coaches might view that, or what are they hiding, right? Um, some of it might be some, some really good reasons, but uh, that's one question they might ask themselves is, what are they hiding? What kind of content is on them that I can't see because um, they don't want to get that information out there, you know? So, so now they're trying to evaluate, you know, what kind of a person you are. And they will often do that with social media. So if, if you have an open profile, then I would, I would scour through your stuff like today. Go through and take anything out on there that is real questionable. Um, you want to talk positively about people. You want to be upbeat about things. Be complimentary of others. Um, and be real careful that any content that's on there because they don't want they don't want to deal with that. They will cross shut their list real fast. And I would venture to say that every single player receiving money in the country, that someone on that coaching staff has gone through their social media stuff to see is this someone that we want to recruit. Um, so be be real careful with what you're putting on there and take down stuff as fast as you can if it's uh, if it's stuff that, that shouldn't be on there. Uh, this, this is a, at some point, if I'm going to be helping you with your recruiting, uh, fill this out. Um, I will, uh, you'll, you'll find that registration on that, uh, that portal. I'll go back and show you how to navigate that. But this gives me enough information if, as you fill out this form so I can answer things pretty quickly and not have to, to email you or text you or find you in the classroom and get a, a bunch of information. And this, this allows me to collect it all at once so I can uh, help you in, in find the stuff when I need it. So uh, if, if you think you're going to be playing uh, college sports and, and I'm going to be helping you with all of that process, then fill that form out. Uh, so if you go even to, if I can find it real quick. Uh, pretty sure on the team app, there's a link to that, that blog, which is the website. I think it's on there somewhere. If not, come by and see me. But there's also you now a link to that form. So get that form filled out. If you have any questions, my office is over at, at Athletics there, uh, kind of behind the Hill. Have a great day.